Over the centuries, international trade and the location of economic activity have been at the forefront of economic thought. Trade theory and economic geography have converged become united through new theoretical insights which emphasize that the same basic forces simultaneously determine specialization across countries for a given international distribution of factors of production and the long-run location of those factors across countries. In 2008, Paul R. Krugman won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics for his contributions to new trade theory and new economic geography. According to the Nobel Prize Committee, the prize was given for Krugman's work explaining the patterns of international trade and the geographic concentration of wealth by examining the impact of economics of scale and of consumer preferences for diverse goods and services. Prior to Krugman's work, trade theory emphasized trade based on the comparative advantage of countries with very different characteristics, such as a country with higher productivity in agricultural goods exporting agricultural goods to a country with higher productivity in industrial goods in exchange for industrial products. However, in the 20th century, an ever larger share of trade occurred between countries with very similar characteristics, which is difficult to explain by comparative advantage. Krugman's explanation of trade between similar countries involves two key assumptions, that consumers prefer a diverse choice of brands and that production favors economies of scale. Krugman's model also involved introducing transportation costs, a key feature in producing the home market effect which would later become key for Krugman's work on the new economic geography. The 
sort of uh, Ur model for economic geography from which the others can be uh, uh, splintered off is, is the core periphery story, where you ask, what, where, do you, where do people live, where do they work, where do you produce stuff? And if you ask, uh, if, if there were no increasing returns, if there were no advantages to large-scale production, you'd want to spread across so that land is, is cheap. You, know, you always want to move to where the land is cheaper and, and life would be easier. Um, but be, if there are economies of scale, then you want to produce each individual thing in only one or a few places. And the places you want to produce tend to be either where the market is largest or where uh, available inputs are most available and where is the market going to be large? It's going to be where lots of other people have chosen to be and choose, chose to produce. So you have the centrifugal force, which is the land, which makes you want to spread things out. Um, but you have the centripetal force, which is trying to be close to the market and the market growing as people locate together, which tends to pull things together. And core periphery models are largely about when does the centrifugal force get overpowered by the centripetal force so that things pull together. Even now, a, a large fraction of the U.S. population lives in a, a fairly small sliver of the East Coast. Uh, why so many industries within countries are in just one place or a couple of places in the country. Um, and it comes down to once you have large advantages of concentrating activities in a large scale, where do you want to concentrate them? The answer is, well, typically where there's a market. Uh, or where there are suppliers, or both. Uh, but where is there going to be a market? Where there'll be suppliers? Be where the industry is concentrated. So you get this kind of self-reinforcing process, which was great because you built a bridge from thinking about international trade. Why does America export airplanes and Japan export cars? To why is New York what it is? Why is why is uh, um, did that so much U.S. manufacturing used to concentrate in, in, in the Midwest. So you integrate, it becomes instead of a, there's a theory of international trade and there's a theory of cities, you actually have a theory about where stuff is, which is an integrated it, the trade and, and geography merged together. It was, it was, it was uh, pretty great stuff actually in terms of, of having fun and, and, uh, and also opened you up to a lot more evidence because there's lots you can, you can take um, you can do a lot of empirical work based on, on the intersection between trade and geography. If trade is largely shaped by economies of scale, as Krugman's trade theory argues, then those economic regions with most production will be more profitable and will therefore attract even more production. That is, Krugman's trade theory implies that instead of spreading out evenly around the world, production will tend to concentrate in a few countries regions or cities which will become densely populated but also have higher levels of income. Fruckman's new trade theory stands out as the one which seems to better explain the fundamentals of the present trade patterns resembling monopolistic competition market pattern based on product differentiation, product loyalty, competitive pricing, dominance of some big firms, and tending toward oligopoly. The theory will explain the dynamics of trade, such as consumer preferences for varieties of similar goods for developing economies to benefit from.